Exploring Epistaroid, a comparative analysis of 5-alpha reductase inhibitors for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia. Androgenetic alopecia, a common condition experienced by many men, presents both physical and psychological challenges that can significantly impact individual self-esteem and overall quality of life. As such, medical intervention becomes a necessity with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, emerging as the mainstay of androgenetic alopecia treatment. Among these inhibitors, finasteride and dutasteride are perhaps the most well-known. Both work by suppressing dihydrogen testosterone, DHT, the primary androgen responsible for androgenetic alopecia. However, there is another 5-alpha reductase inhibitor that is less frequently discussed, and that is epistaride. So in this video, we're actually going to be talking about epistaride in treating androgenetic alopecia. Epistaride, like finasteride and even dutasteride, targets the iso form of the 5-alpha reductase type 2 enzyme. Its potency as a type 2 inhibitor is well documented with its effects observable even at doses between 0.4 to 160 milligrams a day. However, when it comes to DHT suppression, a critical factor in androgenic alopecia treatment, epistaride's effect is significantly lower. Specifically, epistaride can only reduce circulating DHT levels by 25 to 54%. This was noted after eight days of continuous therapy. When compared to the DHT suppression achieved by finasteride and dutasteride, epistaride's impact is markedly less potent. Consequently, its overall clinical benefit in androgenetic alopecia treatment may fall short. When we take a look at epistaride's history and current use, interestingly enough, epistaride was initially under development for several conditions in the 1990s, including benign prosthetic hypoplasia, androgenetic alopecia, and even acne. These efforts were spearheaded by the pharmaceutical company GSK. Epistaride advanced to phase three clinical trials in the United States, United Kingdom, and Japan. However, it never received marketing approval for these countries. Instead, Epistride found its way to the Chinese market in 2000, introduced by Ano Pharmaceutical for the treatment of benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Now, given Epistride's inherent mechanism of suppressing DHT, it theoretically could have potential in androgenetic alopecia treatment. However, it's important to note that the clinical evidence supporting Epistride's efficacy against androgenetic alopecia remains scarce. As such, its role in managing androgenetic alopecia is largely speculative at this stage. That being said, Epistaride could potentially offer an alternative treatment for those who experience adverse side effects from the commonly prescribed finasteride or dutasteride. But even then, it's a large dosage needed to even compete with finasteride, which lowers DHT systemically by levels up to 70% and scalp DHT by between 30 to 40% at one milligram. It would probably make sense to take finasteride at a lower milligram than taking epistaride. But let's say you have some sort of allergy to finasteride and unfortunately to dutasteride, then maybe it might be something to consider to use epistaride. But hey, I'm not a doctor, so go talk to a professional doctor or, you know, person who can provide you professional medical care on this matter. As again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just some dude with a microphone. Now, epistaride's potential doesn't end with the oral administration. It could theoretically be used as a topical anti-androgen treatment, offering the potential to decrease systemic side effects. So here, we're mostly focusing on that scalp DHT, and by administering epistaride, maybe people who have adverse side effects on finasteride, even topical finasteride, as well as dutasteride and topical dutasteride, this could be another avenue to explore. However, the question remains about the extent to which epistaride when applied topically enters systemic circulation and the impact of any such systemic absorption. So in this case, comprehensive research is needed to fully understand the systemic implications of topical epistaride and to validate its safety and efficacy. But it seems like it went through a lot of clinical trials. Again, it went to phase three. And although it didn't get approval to be marketed for a specific causes like hair loss and acne and even benign prosthetic hyperplasia, it still found its way to the Chinese market. So there is an understanding that it's safe and it has some degree of efficacy, but it probably didn't get approved in the other markets because it wasn't as effective as other treatments. So when we start to compare these things, when we discuss 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, dutasteride often stands out due to its dose-dependent effect. For instance, 
at a dosage of 2.5 milligrams, dutasteride can suppress scalp DHT by levels up to 80%, significantly aiding in androgenetic alopecia treatment. Finasteride, though less potent than dutasteride, remains a robust and effective treatment option for most men suffering from androgenetic alopecia. However, epistaride's wider dose range and lesser DHT suppression render it less effective for androgenic alopecia when compared to its counterparts. In addition, the dearth of clinical evidence for epistaride's effectiveness against androgenic alopecia further diminishes its appeal as a primary treatment option. So in conclusion, epistaride, finasteride, and dutasteride are all 5-alpha reductase inhibitors with the potential to manage androgenic alopecia by suppressing DHT. However, epistaride's effectiveness constrained by a larger dose range and lower DHT suppression falls short to the proven success of both finasteride and dutasteride. Furthermore, the lack of clinical evidence supporting epistaride's role in treating androgenic alopecia casts further doubt on its therapeutic potential. Despite these limitations, epistaride might still hold promise for certain patients and further research really is warranted to unlock its full potential of androgenic alopecia management. But I will say that there is a lot of paywalls. There are a lot of paywalls in regards to trying to get these articles for epistaride to try to see these clinical studies and the different phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trial uh, studies. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate to be honest with you. But in any case, that's the end of this video. So I just thought it'd be interesting to talk about this obscure 5-alpha reductase inhibitor that many people don't know about because really it's only marketed in China. And although it had much of its production in the United States, it's research that is in the United States and the UK and such, it got onto the market in China. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you guys on the next one. Peace.